today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv, and today, well, I'm doing a little bit of editing, and I was going through some of my photos, and I noticed I've got a whole bunch of ship models that we have not ever talked about. So I thought we would start doing a new segment uh, called Up Ship Creek, because I have a lot of ship models that uh, we can talk about and uh, show you some new techniques, as well as just some of the builds that I have done over the years. So, to start out today, what I thought we would do is kick off with one that I did, a piece that I did, a diorama that had to do with the Battle of Midway. Now, I really like Pacific War history, particularly Midway, Pearl Harbor, uh, Coral Sea, uh, Philippines, you know, just pretty much anything, you know, Pacific War and uh, naval type stuff I, I really like. So, Anyway, I had put together this diorama of a PT boat base um, that was based at uh, at Midway. Yeah, you know, it's uh, maybe a little bit of a stretch the way it looks compared to what the real one looked at, uh, looked like. But during the battle, yes, they did have a PT boat base there. So today, Mad Dog Merv is going to introduce you to Up Ship Creek. And we are going to look at the PT boat base I did for the Battle of Midway. I built a lot of model ships, 1700 scale, that had to do with the Battle of Midway. It's always intrigued me, this turning point in the Pacific War. You can see here on the map um, the Midway Atoll, which is made up of two islands, and kind of the reef or atoll, if you will, that's, that's around there. Anyway, uh, I've wanted to build a model of this in 1700 scale. I think it would just be wonderful. The problem is it would be massive. But you see here the real one, there's these gun emplacements that are still there. I thought, yeah, we'd put some trucks, we'd do the airfield, I've got aircraft in 700 scale. Man, that would be cool. But I really don't have the room for anything like that. So think smaller. And one of the things that they had at the Battle of Midway, uh, here on Midway Island, besides the airfield, which I can probably do, is a PT boat base. Ah, I think I'd probably do that. So here you can see in 1942 the um, island with the airfield and then the island a little bit further away and the PT boat base that was um, that was uh, there and I thought okay so I am going to do my rendition of it there's no pictures in existence that I could find of the PT boat base during this time. So fortunately in 700 scale there's a couple of options a company called Loose Cannon puts out uh, WH971 which is 700 scale they call it McHale's Navy and it's a PT boat base uh, you can see it set me back 75 bucks for what's in this but to me it was well worth it there's a lot of things in here that I can and have actually um, resin cast for my own purposes so in opening the box this kit includes one resin island base and we'll look at that in a minute one set of brass palm trees from the arsenal which we'll look at that as well and what i did with those it's got two grass huts four large quonset huts eight small quonset huts a t-shaped wharf with refueling tanks four rhino piers some lcms and lcvp which i didn't use those six vehicles uh, cargo pallets and some elco 77 foot PT boats, the early style, and here they are. Ooh, ah, in uh, encased in the uh, the resin. So they're going to need a little bit of work. I'm going to have to do a few details to them, put some masts and the uh, uh, the machine gun bubbles or turrets on the the turret base there. But a uh, great place to start. So here's the island part, and this uh, I've already painted this, unfortunately, but it was just kind of a uh, gray colored. A uh, piece of resin that represents a beach. Uh, so I just I got a base and put it put it there, pal. That's exactly where I what I did with it. 
Uh, one of the other options that I looked into was these from Skywave, one 700 scale motor torpedo boats. Um, obviously, we couldn't use the uh, German ones <laughs> and uh, or the British ones, but the uh, Higgins, uh, I believe they're 78 foot, similar to what PT-109 was. So looking at the back of the box here, on the far left, these are the ones I'm going to use. I believe there were four of them in the box, if I recall correctly. They actually have the mast, and they have um, machine guns and a few other little things, so yay for me. So the base. This was a base from Tamiya that had a clear acrylic top, and what I did is I just painted the whole thing with kind of a uh, turquoise-ish blue, light color, very light color, started with, with light color, went to kind of a little bit of a green, and I airbrushed some uh, darker blue highlights in it. Now of note you will see on the right side there's a line or a separation part um, going up from the island but here's how I fix that. I took <laughs> I took these docks <laughs> um, uh, and, I, and I put them right there on the line and it covered it right up. So what I used here is some of that uh, obscured plexiglass like what you would use for a shower. Usually I do water a lot of different ways. I've never really used this type of obscured acrylic to uh, make water. So this was really a first attempt. I had to cut a section of it out, put it up against the um, the island area. I didn't think this out real well because obviously I'm going to have to fill that. And there's a lot of ways I could do it. But I'll show you what I decided to do. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to get some tape and I'm going to lay out my beach and my roads on this part of the island and then I'm going to go ahead and start laying down some of the foliage just railroad uh, greenery as you can see here poof got that done and I took some silicone caulk is what I decided I would do took some silicone caulk filled in that uh, that gap the best I could uh, you'll see the finished results with everything here in a few minutes and yeah I could have done it a lot better uh, looking at it overhead like this it's not great but hey you'll you'll see in a few minutes so anyway here we go uh, dime on the board there for uh, kind of a size comparison we're gonna start on the far left corner up above and we're gonna go clockwise around and kind of show you all of the little things that we did on this uh, this base remember it's like a 12 by 12 something like that uh, can't remember the exact dimensions but pretty close Okay, so starting up again on the far side there, I've got two of these, uh, the ones from the Skywave, uh, those motor torpedo boats, heading out to sea. And you can see I've done some, just painted them green, did some gray dry brushing on it, uh, gave it a black wash, and turned out pretty good. So again, going clockwise, we go over to this dock. And I thought this would be a great place to put a PBY that I had in 700 scale. Just kind of a fun little touch to fill that corner. Aha, so here we are with the rhino piers. And you get a good picture of the detail here where I've cut some sprue and, and made boxes or crates. Uh, there's a Jeep and a couple of torpedoes because, well, this is a torpedo boat base. And here it is with the torpedo boats on it. Uh, I don't know if this is correct and accurate the way they sat, but from what I have seen, I kind of figured, okay, well, this this makes perfect sense. And you can see the 77-foot Elkos there and how they look. Uh, I haven't put the guns and the, the machine guns and the turrets on yet, nor have I put any of the masts on these as of yet. Here is another view, and you can see, again, more of the torpedoes and the crates. Some of these I've started to put some of the machine guns on. Um, and again, you've got two different styles here. You've got the Higgins boats and the 77-foot uh, Elkos. So, yeah, there you go. That's kind of my rendition of, of where, uh, where they should be oriented on this, on this pier. There is one of the torpedo boats that has a... Well, it's it's molded in such a way like it's sinking. So I beached it on the beach because it's sinking. I don't know why it's sinking, but anyway. Uh, here you can see the um, the turrets, the 
glass coverings for the turrets. If you do a little research on that, you'll see uh, what they're really supposed to look like, similar to what uh, they were on an Avenger torpedo plane. So next, here we have our first palm tree, and this is that palm tree from Le Arsenal. You just kind of got to bend it a little bit, paint it, uh, dry brush it with some kind of yellowish tan, and for the stock, I just use some brown speaker wire. Believe it or not, that's it. You can see all of those really cool uh, loads that are there that are kind of underneath that tree uh, that come with this kit. Uh, just painted all those up. A bulldozer without the, the blade, that was interesting. And some of the vehicles headed up the T dock. So here it is. I actually added this extension that's down towards the bottom because, well, it just didn't make sense to have a dock that you couldn't drive up on, you know. So, uh, yeah, I put it on the beach, and there you go. Here's a quarter next to it, give you some idea of the scale of this uh, of this thing. So we've got our trucks, we've got a crane, um, we've got one of the Quonset huts, and we've got the uh, the fuel barrels, refueling station here on the uh, left hand side. Yeah, there's a better close up of it. Uh, some of the crates, some of the loadouts that are there. Yeah, you can see those uh, look pretty look pretty decent. A lot of uh, dry brushing and a lot of uh, washes with uh, Larry's bath water to uh, get this to really stand out like that. All right, so we're going to come back down the ramp. Uh, you can see a Quonset hut here on the left-hand side, a Jeep and a, another truck, and again, some more of those loads that come in this kit. Uh, I went ahead and put a tower up that was a Skywave tower that I had. Figured that would be, uh, you know, kind of a lookout tower. I mean, come on, you got to look out for a tsunami or something, you know. Um, anyway, another palm, another few palm trees, and there you get some of those grass huts that um, that come in the kit. And I just put them on here how it kind of made sense to me. If you had a little road here on this particular island, you can see on the far left-hand side one of the Quonset huts. I've made a medical building that. Again, that just kind of made sense to me, although the hospital probably would have been closer to the uh, to the other end. But there you go. A lot of that uh, model railroad stuff came in really handy in in building this. The uh, uh, the fine turf uh, that Woodland Scenics has, as well as some of the bushes that they have. Um, yeah, I think it uh, I think it turned out pretty good. All right, so here is kind of an overall view with, I put up a, a background and give you some idea what I feel it should have looked like, uh, well, during early June of 1942. Hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoyed the first section, uh, first segment, I should say, of Up Ship Creek. We're going to be doing these, oh, every couple of months uh, for you ship modelers out there and for some of you guys who like to do crossover stuff because as you can see there's model railroading techniques in here as well so anyway thank you for joining us and hope you enjoy watching the rest of this uh, this video